On April 26, 1986, at 1.23 a.m., reactor number four of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant exploded. The eruption immediately killed two overnight operators and 28 brave firefighters who were completely oblivious that throughout their battle with the flames, they were absorbing up to 20,000 milligrays of radiation, almost 30 times the lethal dosage. The Chernobyl disaster received a level 7, the maximum classification on the international nuclear event scale, making it unquestionably the worst nuclear power disaster in history. Let's rank the top three mistakes that ultimately led to this catastrophe. Coming in at number three, we have the positive void coefficient, a detrimental characteristic of all RBMK or ridiculously badly made kettle reactors that was flat out ignored by the Soviets. See, in nuclear engineering, all nuclear reactors have a void coefficient of reactivity, which is the increase or decrease in the rate of fission and heat generation that would occur following a loss of coolant. In an RBMK, the coolant is light water, and a void refers to a pocket of steam in the liquid water coolant. Coolant slows down neutrons, weakly uptakes neutrons, and cools the reactor core. If light water vaporizes to steam, its chemical properties are inverted. Steam no longer slows down neutrons, absorbs neutrons, or effectively cools the reactor core. See, neutrons need to be slowed to fission with the uranium-235 isotope. It's like the neutrons are cars on a highway, and they need to take exit 235. Exit 235 is where the neutrons can fission with uranium-235 isotopes, but if they're traveling too fast, they won't even see the exit and will drive past. If the neutrons are slowed down, they are able to see the exit in time and take it. To further the analogy, there is a stop sign at the end of the exit. Too many cars taking the exit all at once will cause traffic to back up onto the freeway and cause collisions. In this case, collisions represent uncontrolled reactions. This is where control rods step in. Control rods have powerful neutron absorbing capabilities and in a nuclear reactor act like brakes on a car. The absence of control rods can speed up a reaction, like a car with no brakes. While their presence can slow down a reaction, bring it to an abrupt stop and everything in between, just like brakes on a car. Thus, the control rods are essential for controlling the rate of the reaction, or in our analogy, facilitating unimpeded flow along the highway and exit 235. In nuclear reactors, this is called a sustained chain reaction, as the balance between cars traveling past the exit and taking the exit does not cause impeded flow. A sustained chain reaction is desirable because it allows for continuous controlled fission reactions which release energy and allow the reactor to generate electricity. RBMK reactors use graphite as a moderator, which has chemical properties abstaining from absorbing neutrons and slowing down neutrons, priming them to fission with other uranium-235 isotopes. For fission, you must first use the so-called moderator, something for the neutrons to scatter on and absorb some kinetic energy. In the RBMK reactor, all fuel rods were surrounded by graphite for moderation. Thus, the vaporization of the light water coolant will not slow down the reaction at all. In fact, the reaction will happen faster. The positive void coefficient leads to a positive feedback loop. More steam, more reactivity, more heat, more steam, and so on. This makes RBMK susceptible to runaway chain reactions in the event of a loss of coolant, and that at Chernobyl had been exacerbated by the attempts by the Soviet to make the reactor cheaper to run. The positive void coefficient at this point in time in the 1950s was not a well-known safety issue, but nowadays there are entire web pages dedicated to shedding light upon the dangers the positive void coefficient presents. In the present day, nuclear reactors across the world have a negative void coefficient, which ascribes a negative feedback loop, more steam, less reactivity, 
less heat, less steam, which leads to a reduction in power and is a basic safety feature of most Western reactors. Taking the number two spot is the Scram effect, which earns the runner up for the biggest blunder of the Soviet. Scram was an emergency shutdown procedure, which started by hitting the AZ-5 button. Once pressed, 211 neutron absorbing boron carbide control rods started their descent into the RBMK core, bringing the reaction inside the reactor to a standstill. However, Soviet officials believe that an immediate shutdown would be disruptive to the operation of the Soviet grid. Thus, the AZ-5 scram system was designed to gradually reduce the reactor's power to zero, going from position I to IV over 18 to 21 seconds. But 18 to 21 seconds was an extremely long time for a nuclear reactor, opening a large window of time for a runaway chain reaction to start. This was the first fault of the scram. The second fault was discovered by the senior reactor engineers who described a strange phenomenon. When the scram protocol was initiated and the AZ-5 button was pressed, the reactor control rods may under some circumstances briefly accelerate reactivity instead of slowing it down. This was deemed the positive scram effect, which was documented and swept under the carpet. The source of this positive scram effect lay in the design of the control rods. The rods were made of boron carbide, a potent neutron absorbing compound which absorbs all the neutrons flying around in the reactor core, bringing the reaction to a standstill. However, the tips of these control rods were made of graphite. The main control rods had a 4.5 meter long graphite rod termed a displacer attached to the end of the length of the control rods. Graphite slows down neutrons and abstains from absorbing them, which makes it a perfect reactor accelerant. Thus, when the AZ-5 button was pushed, for a brief moment in time, when only the graphite tips of the reactor control rods were inserted, they increased the strength of the reaction before shutting it down. The Soviet's rationale in tipping the control rods with graphite was to save neutrons and make the reactor more economical to run. This way, they could squeeze every penny out of the reactor they could. This installation has been described as an absurd and chilling inversion in the role of safety devices. As if the pedals of a car had been wired in reverse, so that hitting the brakes made it accelerate instead of slowing down. During the final moments before Chernobyl erupted, the reaction inside the reactor core was already multiplying like mad. When the scram sequence was initiated and the AZ-5 button was pressed, the initial insertion of the graphite tip rods caused the reaction to surge. This was the final straw. The reactor's power output flew to 10 times its rated capacity and the top of the reactor blew off like a cork on a wine bottle. At this point, you may be wondering, the RBMK is a reactor design. Why would the Soviets even use this dumpster design? Well, that segues us to the number one mistake. The Soviet prioritized cheap design and construction over safety. The positive void coefficient and positive scram effect were both products of the Soviet desire to produce electricity for as cheap as possible, throwing caution to the wind. The Soviet planned to mass produce RBMK reactors all across Russia because the RBMK design was their cheapest option. The graphite required as a moderator in the RBMK was abundant and heavily mined in Russia, making it cheap and bountiful. Additionally, graphite's chemical properties abstained from absorbing neutrons. This allowed the RBMK to use low enriched uranium as fuel, which allowed the Soviet to save on fuel costs. To further cost savings, the reactor containment unit was left out of the design entirely. The design of the reactor also does not provide for a safety containment. 
The reactor containment structure is the third barrier from radioactive release and protects against hazards such as floods, earthquakes, hurricanes, cyclones, tornadoes, and even an external impact from a missile strike. The reactor containment vessel would have been 20 times the volume of Western reactor counterparts, effectively doubling the cost of the reactor. Thus, the Soviet phased the steel-reinforced concrete vessel out of the reactor design entirely. Stretching cost savings even further, cheap construction materials were purchased as the concrete was cited by construction workers as Workers forecasted these defects to lead to future accidents. There were other mistakes contributing to the meltdown at Chernobyl, but I covered the big three in my personal opinion. Now, I love nuclear reactors, and I don't want you to walk away from this video feeling like nuclear reactors are dangerous. The point of this video was to illustrate all of the Soviet mistakes when dealing with one of the most powerful elements on Earth, uranium. The silver lining here is that we can learn so much from this disaster and make nuclear reactors safer than ever moving forward, so a disaster like this never happens again. And that's exactly what has happened. Modern nuclear reactors use water as a moderator, which is an important safety feature as an increase in temperature would cause the water to turn to steam, thereby reducing the extent to which neutrons are slowed, reducing the reactivity in the reactor. Therefore, if reactivity increases beyond normal, the reduced moderation of neutrons will cause the chain reaction to slow, producing less heat. This is known as the negative void coefficient and is an important distinction between the RVMK and Western PWR reactors, which comprise 70% of the reactors worldwide. Chernobyl was a harsh lesson that safety must be the number one priority when splitting the powerful atom and one that hopefully humanity will never have to learn again.